Welcome to the Clear to Send podcast, a podcast about wireless engineering, where we educate you on Wi-Fi technology, talk about design tips, troubleshooting, interviews, and the tools. Here are your hosts, Roel and Francois. Hey everybody, this is Roel Dionisio of Clear to Send. We are live recording here at Cisco Live. Actually, we're not at Cisco Live. We're at the Wi-Fi training party where there's a lot of people here, drinks are flowing, and we decided to bring someone here, take him away from the party to talk about Edgerum. So I'm joined here with my co-host, Francois. How are you doing? Hi, Roel. Very good. Thank you. And we have our special guest. Why don't you introduce yourself? Yes, uh, thank you for having me on the show. It's a privilege. My name is Anders Nilsson. I'm uh, from Sweden. People typically know me, the guy who walks around with a Wi-Fi moose. And uh, I work for the University of Umeå. And I also do some work for the Swedish Academic Network. And uh, I mostly do wireless stuff, but uh, actually today I've been doing uh, quite a lot of wide stuff as well. So I'm, I'm also partly responsible for the technical reference group within the academic community in Sweden and technically responsible for Edrom in Sweden as well. Yeah, because that's going to be our topic today, or in this episode, which is Edgerum. And for me, I know I, I run Edger, I, we have Edgerum on campus, and people often ask what is required to use Edgerum, why is it there, why should I join that versus the campus Wi-Fi. And there are some benefits to using Edgerum, especially when you're maybe at a, let's say, roaming to a different campus, for example. But uh, why don't you drill into an introduction of Edgerome and uh, kind of why it's there? Why does it exist? Uh, to, to go way back in the old days, I think if I remember correctly, Edgerome was created around 2003 when uh, we started thinking about having better ways to make guest, guests or guest students coming to visiting other universities and giving them instant access to the wireless network. Uh, actually, before that, they had a solution where they had an open SSID, and the only thing that was allowed through that SSID was VPN access. So you, you were thinking about having a a global spanning access list opening up for all the VPN servers in the world. And eventually they figured out that this solution won't scale. So they went, they went for a, a .1x solution instead. And in order for that, that to work, they needed to have a federation of radio servers that, that could accommodate that you're visiting one university and the radius traffic finds its way all the way back to the home university. And that's, that's, that, that was the one idea that sparked Edrome. And Edrome in itself is, uh, well, to start with, it, it was uh, started in, in the Netherlands. as a guy who actually worked for, for Cisco for a while called Klaus Virenga. Hello, Klaus, if you're listening to this. <laughs> And uh, he, uh, he and some other guys uh, took, took some time and, and created this initial idea where you were able to visit a guest university. And, and the, the, action, the, the, wording, the exact wording was open your laptop and be online. So, so the idea was that there was no hassle. You just go to the, you just go to the, the, 
you just, you just open your laptop. I mean, in, in the old days, you would have to go to the IT department or the help desk to get yeah, the right. request yes. access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Need to some yeah. sort of guest, But it, guest if method. you were at your institution, you have already had joint edge your room, yeah. so it's an SSID that your yeah. laptop or device knows. Yeah. So when you open your laptop at a visiting university, it automatically connects. Yeah. And so I'm assuming those credentials don't hit the local radius server of the no, institution. They, they, they yeah, go precisely. The, the, the idea with this this called federated radius solution was that if you, it works like pretty much like uh, email address, your identity is is being looked up by the local the first the first radio server you hit, and if it doesn't match as your home university, it get proxied forwards. And, and and eventually, I mean, it's 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 in like like in DNS lookup. You 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 see, okay, I, I'm I can't find it in a local university, so I, I go to the central radio server for for that particular country, and if it doesn't. Okay. And is that something hosted by Edgerome? Like, how, do, yeah. how does the how does the, yeah, the traffic the, know yeah, where to go? Question. I mean, I mean, uh, as I told you, Edgerome in itself is a federation and an organization, what we call the national roaming organization. They sign up to to be connected to Edgerome. So, for instance, back home in Sweden, the Swedish Academic Network, they are connected to the European Edgerome Federation. And because everything started in the Europe, but eventually it, it expanded even further. So we had a, uh, one uh, one top server. Uh, actually, we had two top servers in, in Europe, and then we had two top servers in Asia, and eventually we also had uh, one uh, one server in the U.S. and one server in Canada. And currently, I don't know the top of my head, but I do think that there's supposed to be a, a server, uh, a top server in in uh, in South America as well. But I, I, I have to check that one up. So, is the Edgerome program close to only universities, or are you guys opening it up to other public uh, places? I'm thinking airport, uh, yeah. train stations, uh, and yeah. so on. Uh, we we are distinguishing between two entities. We have like a service provider, and that's basically someone who's providing Edrum as a service that you can you can visit. Uh, like we have back in Sweden, we have uh, the airports and and some train stations and some hotels and some some city centers where we have made contracts or agreements with different organizations, okay. and they're providing Edrum as a service. But it's not like anyone who's who's working for that airport can use Edrom, but they are providing Edrom as a service. To, to, to use Edrom you need to be an identity provider. So that you have these two two okay. but but the, the typical thing is if you are identity provider you're also mandated to be a service provider. So if you if you're giving access to you you you're you're giving your users access to Edrom you're also obliged to to provide Edrome. Okay. So, why would a, a, a typical business, not not a, a university, why would typical business uh, be interested in Edrome? In, in providing Edrome. Well, to start with, it, it's convenient. If you have, uh, I mean, we 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 had a good uh, good collaboration with with the company running the Swedish airports and that's basically because it, it worked so smoothly for them they there were no hassle it, it became very popular and uh, it kind of boosted the value for 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 the company running running the airport and also typically in all the city centers where we have uh, uh, where especially where you have large universities in Sweden it, it gives a, a added value for the students to kind of go downtown and you can sit on a coffee shop and you can just open your laptop and, and get online. Yeah. And, and, and also I have to put the emphasis, and I didn't, didn't add that to, to, to how Edrom actually works, because it's .x or actually WPA to enterprise yeah. based, yeah. you also have an encrypted connection. So it's not like you're going to your yeah. your normal uh, coffee shops and just go on an open SSID yeah. right, and right. typically get hacked. There's, there's going to be some sort of authentication there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So can, can you go into any of those details as to what those requirements should be? Because it's definitely not a pre-shared key. No. So we're talking about certificate-based 
uh, installa- installation there that yeah. where someone's going to have to manage the certificate server, which is going to be the institution that the user yeah. is authenticating to. Well, actually, they they uh, talking about EAP types. It's it's a. Uh, I think it's a two-hour session because, <laughs> yeah. because there are so many many let's, ones. Let's but just let's just minimize but, that yeah, to but, about but in, ten when, minutes. Yeah, precisely. <laughs> initially, when 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 Edrum started off, you had the you had the situation where where people uh, were talking, mm. with, with, uh, yeah, uh, where people were uh, kind of uh, arguing that that the only way to do it was TTLS because. Because in those days, the the only way people were thinking that it would work was to use use uh, credentials. I mean, uh, user and password. But but here's the three uh, the th- the trick. If you're doing it, if you're doing it uh, TTLS, you have a tunnel TLS tunnel going inside your radius packets all the way from from your visiting university back to your home institution where your uh, IDP is and and that that actually makes it a secure connection uh, but is that a requirement for people to deploy a radius? They have to use e- TTLS. No, uh, in the old days, people thought that, but but actually that wasn't really true because you can use uh, as long as you use well, basically you can use pretty much any EAP type you like, as long as you can put something something that generates a username inside the radius packet so it can find its way back home. But for instance, EAP, EAP MD5 doesn't really cut it because you, 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 just, you, you have something hashed in, in plain text. So, so the thing is we need to have it secured in some sort of fashion. So the way to do it is, is to have some sort of TLS connection going back. And, and you can do it either via EAP TTLS, you can do it via EAP TLS, in which you just have a client certificate on your device, and that one is your authentication method, or you can do it via PEEP, and PEEP in itself has many different flavors, as you, we can dive into some other time. And then you have some some of the new called Eep Fast would also actually work. Yeah. Nobody's so doing also, that. It's but, gonna, but, a lot of it's going to depend on yeah. what kind of authentication server you're going to use, yeah, what, what Eep types it supports, yeah. and how, I guess, uh, to put it in a lack of words, like how easy is this going to be for the users to yeah. install certificates, yeah. for example, on their, on their devices. Yeah. And, and also, the, the thing is here, if, if you're not using EPTLS, where you have a, a client certificate on your computer, you actually could do, is, do this without having to install anything. The only caveat there is that if you do that, you have to take into account that you are there's a possible man in the middle attack. Yeah, because you got to trust the, the certificate. What the, server is displaying that certificate to you, the user has to know what server that's coming from, yeah. which they're never going to know yeah. what the real server is going to be. The, the, this, this was a main hurdle in the in the old days because because typically people were using Edrom and they didn't provide proper uh, uh, settings to their, their device. So, so what would you recommend for people? Because I think that's maybe uh, one of the areas of attack, right? Yeah. Um, how would you recommend to people that want to deploy Edge Roam, how would you suggest they do it? I mean, my personal view uh, since, let me see, you know, it was 12 years ago we started using EPTLS. So I would strongly suggest using EPTLS, mainly due to the fact that that uh, even though I get hacked, I'm not exposing any sort of credentials. It's just it's just a client certificate going going on, and uh, there's some sort of announcement going on. Yeah. But we have, we have we have a party going. I mean, on we're here we're at a pool, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not in the water doing yeah. this recording. Yeah. We might be. We you might know, be soon. <laughs> no, uh, getting back to that, uh, the, I would I would strongly suggest, and this has been my 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 firm belief as as the pro that progressed that that we needed some sort of onboarding mechanism yeah. in which which we had an automatic way to to set up things. Uh, uh, a trusted the, way to yeah. get the certificate. Yeah, precisely. You you have 
some some way. Either you get onboarded when you when you're at your home site, or you have some sort of way. And there are different different means. Currently, we're using the iServer, the, the Cisco product, for onboarding our clients. Uh, in the old days, we just had a manual website providing client certificates, and we provided them with instructions. But uh, what's coming up now, and what's had been available, um, I have to have to give, give my regards to Stefan Winter, who's been doing a really, really great, great work at, at another, another uh, support uh, in software, which you call the CAT, the Client Assistant Tool. Yeah, and I've seen that. Yeah. You, you look for your institution, yeah. and you can download the certificate, the, yeah. um, I guess, the root and, CA. And it's been developed even further. So, so in the old days, CAT could only provide typically uh, users using PEEP or EPTTLS, but now now we're looking into e, uh, developing it even further, so we can provide client certificates via this tool. So you have a because right to, now it's just a server certificate. Yeah, we, we we're running it as a pilot, as a, as a service back back home in, in Europe and, and uh, we have some projects and we are collaborating from, from the Scandinavian or the Nordic countries to to enhance this product even more so you can you can have a federated login via yeah. S, uh, web SSO and you anywhere oh, you that's can be perfect. Anywhere, pretty much anywhere in the world and just log into your home institution via the website and then you're you're provided the the right uh, the right uh, certificate. certificate and all all the profile and the settings that will be installed into your computer so you can you can done properly you will be pretty safe yeah because i uh i've had this request on campus where somebody said hey i don't uh, stanford's not on the cat list but like you said it's still a pilot yeah because they requested us to be on that cat list and, and, the and what, what's the url to get to that it's like cat.edurome.org uh, i think it's cat.edurome.org if i remember correctly yeah and uh well, to start with, anyone who's interested in knowing more about Edrum, just just go to www.edrum.org. Yeah, and um, there are a lot of people that use Edrum. It uses your credentials at your current institution. A lot of institutions are part of Edrum, uh, and many of them are actually just going to Edrum as their primary SSID, yeah. which is which is good, I guess, right? For environments that are using multiple SSIDs, you can just kind of narrow that down to Edgerome as your single SSID, have all your permissions, your role base yeah. done through there, and on top of that, it's certificate-based authentication. Would you, uh, are you able to have different profiles uh, underneath the Edgerome SSID, so you could have like different uh, access for students versus the teachers? Yeah, and, yeah, of course. I mean, okay. I mean, you, 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 you know who's logging in, and you can tie them to a group, and you okay. can have some sort of authorization what's what's typically be, being done the, the easiest way you typically want to distinguish your own uh, university people Versus from others. the guests yeah, yeah. so you okay. put the guests on the guest network and you put put your other well, sometimes you put the students in the guest so network. Have, <laughs> so you can have the edge room is said to support your entire campus. Yeah. Okay. And, and I mean, I mean, you just got to be able to see that domain name yeah. that's coming in and yeah. recognize that this is my my user, my institution. Bring them to this server here for authentication. Yeah. If anyone else, send them to, I guess, a proxy. I think yeah. that's that, that's the one part I don't fully understand is when uh, visiting person joining Edgerom, they join Edgerom, we see that it's not our domain. Where do we send that traffic? You said there's a proxy. Is yeah. that your yeah, proxy I mean, server? What, what you do is every, every uh, one is, who is running uh, what, uh, what I call the service provider function, <coughs> they need to proxy that radius packets on board somewhere. Yeah. And, and what's typically being done depending on, on where you are and what country size you have or what type of organization what you typically do is that you forward that to either to your national top level or 
in some instances you have you can use the the latest way to, to forward uh, radius packets which is done via dynamic dns lookup and then you have a, a tls tunnel going, going and that's down. something the institution decides on yeah, how to precisely. do that okay and now i guess when you when you're dealing with multiple institutions right one single ssid multiple different domain names that could possibly hit this edge room ssid troubleshooting comes to mind so a lot of fingers can be pointed here i can say and well you're not part of our institution we send that data to your to your institution how how does a troubleshooting start there where the the user is visiting they can't connect how do they like how do you troubleshoot that part yeah i mean th this has been the subject of discussion for many years and and the thing was uh, the the general recommendation is that if you're visiting a, a, a site and you don't get Edium to work, you, sh you really should contact your home institution and ask them: Is is my are, are you actually receiving my radius packets? And if that it, if that doesn't work, it's typically the <coughs> the responsibility of the of the uh, the, the people who are who are. Uh, operating the uh, home institution the the idp back home their responsibility to to uh, do the troubleshooting onwards because because typically there have been uh, situations where where people who are visiting other universities or, or or sites go to the local help desk and ask for help but the yeah. problem is they, the people who are at the visited help desk, they don't know how how your how your Edrum set up or your settings, your EPLS settings, and 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 and, and everything should work. Right. So so they typically can't help you. There are even been ways that they were then they try to enforce another setting, which is the local university setting, and that's that's not a typically a good idea. We have been talking for quite a few years about having some sort of back channel for people to be able to report problems and so. But I would say, I mean, there's been there, there's been a, a long road in in order to get Edrum to work as a as a so to say more stable service. In the old days, we had a lot of issues with uh, people setting up. I mean, in the old days, we even had web encryption. And then we had the WPA, and then we had WPA mixed mode with WPA2, and then we enforced everyone to move to WPA2, and that took quite a while as well. So you got this so, evolution so, so, of authentication so, here. Yeah, and the problem was that there were people coming to other sites, and they had they had the WPA only set uh, set I, I, I will say I, I like that this background music here is trying to make you sound sexy as you talk about this right this is a sexy topic <laughs> yeah sure. Let, let's see let's see where we end up we have some music or some singing going on here but, but now you're at certificate base which I think is a very good place to be when it comes to authentication at a visiting institution as you try to authenticate back to your home institution um, uh, I generally don't see problems on my campus when it comes to Edge Rome, and usually it's seamless. I get good feedback even from our users visiting other institutions, so I, I think it's making a lot of headway. I'm also hearing people wanting to make that as their sole SSID for their network, which is a also good a sign. good sign. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're minimizing your overhead with all these yeah. unnecessary SSIDs. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's great. I had a question. Who uh, who takes care of all the radio servers that Adrum has? Do you, is it like different people located in different universities that comes together, or is it a separate organization? I mean, typically, if one university have one radio server, it's not. Uh, you know, it, like, it depends on the size of the university. There are some universities that are very very large. Yeah. They have separate IT department for each institution. Okay. So okay, the, so they don't have like a one for the country. You, you mentioned that earlier. Yeah, yeah but, but but those are only like uh, proxying servers. Oh, they proxy. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, typically the top level server in Sweden. That uh, actually we have two. Th those are only forwarding radius packets. They, okay. they, they're not doing any authentication. So so you have a, like a. I should 
some sort of hub and spoke model where you okay. where I'm, I'm, I'm visiting another university in Sweden and the, and the radius packets go up to the top the Swedish top level okay and and then and it bounces back to the to my home okay. I mean, do, do you guys get data on what that latency looks like if they're sending if you're sending authentication towards your home institution I mean, yeah, depending I mean, on where I, you are <laughs> it sounds like a joke but I, I've been constantly arguing that I should visit New Zealand once <laughs> because, because that's uh, as far as I can see the, the most latency you can get from 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 the Swedish point of view but <laughs> but, but uh, yeah I think uh, I mean, what we did, the only thing we need to do is that we, we need to do some tweaking on the radio service so you don't get uh, timeouts and you, you get too much uh, retransmi retransmissions because you have to keep in mind that every radio packet is a single packet yeah. and, and it's a UDP based. Yeah. So, so retransmissions is an issue. And also if you have like your wireless infrastructure typically have some sort of timeout value. Yeah. Uh, if you're running a Cisco controller, I would recommend to rise that value from two seconds to five seconds. Okay. Typically, uh, I've seen I've seen uh, the times when that has been quite beneficial. Okay. So, do you have any uh, general guideline and 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 uh, configuration standards that you give out to universities that want to implement Edgerome, or they can do pretty much what they, whatever they want on their configuration? Well, there are there are definitely guidelines, and if you go okay. go to ed, edrom.org, there is actually a cookbook there. So you 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 have. Where and you guys have the recipes. Pardon me. You guys have the recipes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, precisely. We've been we've been cooking this service for quite a while. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, there, there are, uh, and actually, they're still uh, updating the cookbook. So currently, we have uh, information how to do it. If you have a free radio server, if you have a radiator, or if you have an NPS. Okay. So th those are the typical ones you have back home. Uh, we have we made some uh, work on the on the i server, and, and I do think actually Aruba. If I don't don't out on the limb here too much, I do think that Aruba also have some sort of uh, internal documentation how how to oh, how very to nice. copy your clear pass if you're doing that. Yeah, that's useful because they recognize how big Edgerome is, especially in education institutions. I mean, that's yeah. going to be big for them as well because yeah. they're. Aruba is in a lot of EDUs. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I mean, let's wrap, let's wrap this up because a party is starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, where can people find out more about you? You're on Twitter. Uh, any other sites they should look at? Yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm still trying to get my blog working, but I would I would definitely recommend everyone who's interested in knowing more about Edrom to go to www.edrom.org. That's that's the main thing. Uh, we have some information in Sweden, but that's in Swedish, so I don't think <laughs> much of the audience will will uh, think much I mean, about there's that. There's Google Translate. Yeah, precisely. There's always Google Translate. <laughs> And uh, if you want to find me on Twitter, it's uh, at Herr Nilsson, uh, with two R. We'll Herr put a Nilsson link. Too. We'll put a link in the show notes for uh, you. We'll yeah. put the link because it's 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 kind of a spoof. Everyone everyone calls calls me like the the monkey of Pippi Longstocking. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, I, we appreciate you coming to join yeah. us, uh, taking you away from the party a little bit to talk yeah. about Edge Room. I mean, it's really great yeah. information to get out there for people who want to use Edge Room. But yeah, I mean, this. Uh, what, do you, what do you think so far, real quick, about Cisco Live? Yeah, it's been, as always, it's been great, especially the uh, the, Euro, the U.S. events because it's it's huge. You meet you meet a lot of friends, you can network, and, and you meet the right people uh, and get the opportunity to ask them the right questions and get the right answer. Actually, the party I just came from, I I have to give a shout out to Javier Contreras, who's who's, who's really the the get, go to guy if you run into issues with Cisco wireless equipment awesome well great yeah thanks yeah. for coming out we appreciate, appreciate it. it okay thank you guys thank you. Bye -bye.